Hello, and welcome to the Basketball Addicts Podcast. The one podcast in the world where we answer the only question that really, truly matters, and you know this for a fact. It's not how do we end world hunger. It's not how do we stop poverty. Who cares? All those are very important. <laughs> wait, wait a second, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> all those are very important but the one question that right. everybody who listens to this podcast and those who don't want to answer is how you can outside the funds you can't even get in how can you pay from outside the funds you can't even get in and that's where we're going today ladies and gentlemen thank you all for tuning in we are the basketball addicts so <clears throat> Today, right? We're gonna do something a little special. You know, it's a little in the middle of the day. You know, normally mm-hmm. we record at night, so we got a lot more energy right now. So we were just having a natural conversation. We was like, we have to go ahead and start recording right now. Yes. So where are we at, Jason? Right? I'm just saying, like, how much I hate, you know, some of these bad teams. I like, I feel like uh-huh. there's a way to fix them. You know, one in particular, and some people may not agree with me on this, is the Atlanta Hawks, right? Yeah. I just don't like the Atlanta Hawks that much. I mean, like, I I love the the ceiling they have, right? And I love the talent True. they have. But I feel like they would just never go anywhere because of how they're built. What do you mean by that? Meaning that they are built for a small ball basketball in a big man's world. <laughs> That's true. Which is a change. It used to it, not be a big man's world. That's Exactly, right? So, like, yeah. they're built for the Currys of the league. Uh-huh. You know, but Curry isn't that. I mean, he's he's a great player still, but he's not that guy anymore. LeBron's yeah. he's still a great player, but he's not that guy anymore. The right. new guy is a guy in Milwaukee from uh-huh. Greece. Yes, the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo. You gotta be. That's the new guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, that that type of thing has happened a lot in history where. Oh my God! There's Michael Jordan. We need guards who can defend, and we need exactly. big centers. Oh my gosh, we have Kareem in the league. Well, we can't have a small center playing. We we need big centers. We, we you can't beat like oh my gosh, the best two teams in the league are Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, and they got Kevin McHale and Kareem. We can't go play in these small lineups against these guys. Those were six nine, six eight, and above. Right, the greatest players have always dictated the NBA. And yes. Giannis Antetokounmpo is you need taller players now to to stop him in the East if you want to be champions, which should be the goal of every team. So right. I feel like you're right. And it used to be about okay, LeBron, you you didn't need super tall players. You needed yeah. wing defenders. Right? Mm-hmm. You needed those switchable three and that's 3 and D. All these 3 and D people that got paid for the last decade should be <laughs> yeah. paying LeBron, okay? Yeah. They were needed to stop them, okay? And get yeah. switched out on Steph Curry, right? Right. He's, the, he exposed centers and like, okay, you can't guard me. Okay, we need switchable guys. And right now we're watching like, okay, how small is your center going to be? He, need, he needs to be really strong and could be mm-hmm. shorter. Like, bam, strong. Bam's yeah. a strong human being. He can deal with that type of thing. You need some sort of size to center now. It's changing. It's yeah. kind of fun to watch. You're right. It, we're seeing and the Clint's emergence of the... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. And Clint Capella's not that. And their backup center, Anyanka Angaku, was a 6'9 guy who was drafted to stop these switchable guys. Yeah. But he's he's not strong enough to play with Giannis. No. Yeah. Not in the slightest. We're seeing the emergence of the Ante de Kumpo era. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, think about this for a second. <clears throat> when Shaq was playing, and we've came, I mean, I was born 98. Jason, I think, was 97, correct? 97. 97. Yeah. So we seen like the latter half of his <laughs> of him for real. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know yeah. 80s Shaq except for YouTube. We yeah. don't really know 90s yeah. Shaq except for YouTube and NBA League Pass. Shout out NBA League yeah. Pass. We only yeah. know like Seriously. 2000 to 2000, like. <laughs> Tennis when he was on the Suns, uh-huh. he was like, "What are you doing on the Suns and the Cavs?" You know, <laughs> Celtics. We we only it's know that bad. Shaq. So, yeah. but from what we do know, from what we have gathered from YouTube University, is that Shaq was a <laughs> dominant force. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Shaq was a very dominant force, and you uh-huh. know what you had to do when you had Shaq? Nothing. There was nothing you can do because he was three fifty mm-hmm. and he ate cheeseburgers on the weekend, and he came yeah. in and destroyed you in basketball no matter what. But mm-hmm. there was a player. And I think you know where I'm going, Jason. There was a player who was like, I'm like seven foot tall, and I don't have to be back to the basket the entire time. Yao Ming. 
Mm. Yao Ming was the only player outside of Dwight Howard, but Dwight Howard was was like older at that time. I mean, it was, yeah. was like younger at that time. Shaq was in the older stage when Dwight Howard finally came to sleep. Yao Ming was the player who came in and was able to, I wouldn't say was a Shaq stopper because there's no uh-huh. such thing as a Shaq stopper, but he was able to play along with him be- because of the fact that he was just a little bit more, he had more, he had more in his bag of tricks than, uh, than other centers at that time. A lot of centers were back to the basket. I'm just going to get destroyed mm-hmm. by Shaq because there's nothing I can do. And I'm not strong enough. Yao Ming had finesse. He could shoot, he could fade away from the basket, shoot a couple jumpers and things like that, hook shots, and really kind of like, kind of make it hard at the, at the time. So that's mm-hmm. what you kind of need now. Think about Giannis in terms of Shaq. Even though I see more more Shaq more Shaq and Joel than Giannis, I would say mm-hmm. that you just think of him in terms of that, like where you have to somehow there has to be a player out there somewhere. Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, somewhere that will be able to finesse and play with him. And if you don't have that type of player, you just mm-hmm. let him run roughshod over your team the entire time. And that's what's happening in the East because there's not too many great bigs in the East. There's not too no. many great bigs in the West. And that's and the only day, the only time you're really going to have Giannis is going to have a problem with the team is if he has a bad day. You, <laughs> sure. If he has a bad day. <clears throat> Other than that. There's no stopping. He's gonna drop thirty. He's gonna drop twenty nine to thirty point to thirty points on you every night. Twenty five to thirty points yeah. on you every night. That's that's just on a that's just that's the walk in the park. That's just a given. Because who's going to stop that? Yeah. The only person we've ever seen under seven foot that stopped Giannis was LeBron, and that was during that was right before the bubble. Yeah, and I would like to say like. Giannis used to be able to be swapped by defensive schemes. Okay, that doesn't work anymore. He, yeah. he used to be able to. You could just build the wall, and he's he's just advanced so much basketball IQ wise that he's just learned how to defeat every one of those systems. And now he's unstoppable by gimmicky defenses. Um, mm-hmm. And I would say that it's it's kind of oddly poetic because the league was for a while about three-point shooting and finesse and we need thin athletic guys and it was the death of the power forward post power forward right we were watching power forwards die like david west and Mm -hmm. blake griffin and like yeah these guys that were in the 90s and the 2000s they'd catch it on the block right they would be in the mid post and facing people up in the mid range and oh i'm gonna shoot over you i'm a you know, dribble maybe one or two dribbles and get to the rim. But, you know, NBA systems went away from that. And, you know, Steph Curry and that one became, okay, we need two wings on the wing. We need Andre Iguodala and, you know, we yeah. need Andrew Wiggins. And, you know, look at the Phoenix Suns right now. Mikhail Bridges and Jay Crowder and Cam Johnson, not a traditional power forward in those teams. Mm-hmm. And we, we've seen a unique growth in the power forward position where it's like, Okay, our answer to that is power players that have the handle to get to the rim are exposing these systems because now yeah. we have Giannis, right? Six foot eleven has a handle, can get to the rim. Pascal Siakam's averaging twenty six a game. People, okay, he's six nine, has a handle, can get to the rim, big bodied. Okay, you want to put little six foot eight thinner guy on me? Good luck, Zion <laughs> Williamson, power yeah. forward, underrated handle, can really get to the rim and finish. Pablo Bencaro, the rookie that's averaging more than twenty a game. 6'10", big bodied, can get to the <laughs> rim and finish, has a good handle. Yeah. We're witnessing a revolution in the power forward position that's been led by Giannis. That is the answer because mm-hmm. the power player is back and being a valuable source of winning in the NBA. And it's yes. a complete, it's like, okay, you wanted to do this? Okay, checkmate here. It's like the power forward position completely changed and, and now it's back in relevance. And you know what? That's like the perfect way to sum everything up. Because remember, we were talking about this before. It was like many episodes back, you know, because we've yeah. done over 100 episodes by now. Thank you guys again. Shout out. Yep. Um, yep. And remember, we were talking about, I think you were talking about the evolution of the point guard. And I was like, the next evolution is Giannis. And we are literally <laughs> seeing it. I was like, this is we're going to see this in our lifetime. We're going to see Giannis yeah. really take the crown and create a whole new revolution. First, we yes. saw Curry. <laughs> 
And everybody was like, mm-hmm. oh, we got to shoot. We got to be able to shoot the long ball. We got to mm-hmm. be able to defend from the half court. We got to have, a, I mean, I mean um, a full court defense now because we don't know yeah. where he, when he's going to pull it. Now you have to worry about, okay, I don't have, because of Curry and his longevity in the, in the, in the NBA, I don't have mm-hmm. what I need to protect the paint anymore because I've set mm-hmm. my entire defense up to fight small ball. Yes. <clears throat> to fight small ball, Golden State Warriors with Curry, Iguodala, Harrison Barnes, Andrew Audrey, you know, I'm mm-hmm. talking about the old Golden State Warriors mm-hmm. team. Yeah. Curry, Clay, Iguodala, Harrison Barnes, and Draymond. That's what I've set yeah. my entire defense up to be able to stop. But yet, wait a second. Uh-huh. Here's 6'11, almost seven <laughs> foot tall, Giannis yes. Antetokounmpo, and he yes. can't shoot to save his life. But if he goes in the paint, it's over with. What can I do? I just get dunked on every time. Uh-huh. And yeah. now you have to, now, now we're in a weird m- mesh of the of eras right now. <clears throat> yes. Because LeBron played so long that now he's meshing with the Curry era. Curry's yeah. playing, he's, he's, he's in his like 30s right now. So now he's meshing with the new era, which is the Giannis era. So now teams have to figure out, <clears throat> okay, I built my team to stop LeBron. Uh-huh. Okay. I built my team to stop Curry. Right. But do I sacrifice the defense against those teams to beat Giannis? Or do I just try to somehow mesh all of this together? And because it's it's hard to stop the Bucks. The Bucks are a tall yes. and long team. It's very they're all tall. Yes. They're all very tall and long guards and power forwards and small forwards. They're all tall. So it's like yeah. it's it's just so much. So it's like you. It's like teams have to figure out what do I disregard in order to beat the new generation. Because uh-huh. you can't, you're like you've built your team, like I said, you built your team to stop LeBron. Okay, boom, you did that. You built your team to stop Curry. Boom, you did yeah. that. Now you have Giannis and his emergence of his new era, and all these other guards. Like, wait, we mm-hmm. can play in this era now. These yes. taller guards, Siakams, the Lori Markinens, the um, yes. you know th- those type of players. They're like, wait, we can we are, we're actually effective now. Yes. What do you choose? It's 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 interesting. And, you know, I really feel like a, I feel like a great way to back up this point is when you think about the teams that are winning basketball right now, Cleveland Cavaliers. Right. They got two centers inside Evan Mobley yes. and Jared Allen. OK, yeah. in the Bucks, we got we have Giannis and Brooke Lopez and the Boston Celtics. We have Al Horford and Robert Williams. Right. They do mm-hmm. have length like those two guys are tall, six, nine, and they're both like six, ten. Right, that's some some length more than what the average team brings. And then yeah. we got in the West, we got Jokic and Aaron Gordon. Right, that's Aaron Gordon's like six nine. Right, yeah. Let me think about it. Who, who else are we winning in with Memphis Grizzlies? Stephen Adams and Jaron Jackson. Jackson Jr. Yeah, right. Yeah, like we're seeing a lot of these teams that are winning are bigger. Right, yeah. and it's just I think it's a reflection of the way the league is answering the Golden State Warriors style of basketball. And the Atlanta Hawks GM is actually an, an old Warriors disciple. Like he was from the Warriors front office and then he went to the Atlanta Hawks and okay, we draft Trey Young and we're trying to build the Golden State. That's why they drafted Kevin Herter because they thought he'd be like Clay Thompson. And that yeah. was why they drafted DeAndre Hunter because they thought he'd be like Andre Godala. And mm-hmm. really, so like it's, 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 um, it's definitely changing. We're witnessing the change of the guard here where you're going to start rethinking the way you're going to build your team. And these taller guys are really starting to become more prevalent. Yeah. Think about yeah. this for a second, right? Yeah. Bowl, bowl, right? Yes. He, we've seen him like come into the league and kind of get swept under the rug, right? Because he couldn't <laughs> switch. Because he tall. couldn't switch. Too tall. Now yeah. in Orlando, he's thriving. Uh-huh. <laughs> Too tall, perfect, who cares? <laughs> perfect, perfect example right there. We couldn't yeah. play him in Denver, but now uh-huh. we can play him perfectly because nobody can stop him because he's too tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nobody is I built agreed. in order to stop that. It's sort of just, and nobody is built currently to stop that type of offense from a tall mm-hmm. guard who can put the ball on the floor. This is okay. This is why when Vic comes to the league, whatever team gets him. <laughs> Probably won't lose too many games. <laughs> I kid you not, because the teams yeah, are not built so that right. way. They're not built yeah. right th- like that right now. And then like, you're, is everybody going to just it's like, okay, shift. listen? This is why, like, I think that okay. So Vic, for one, right? And I'm a, I'm gonna go to a point, and I believe you're going to agree with me here. This is why I believe that Cat needs to leave Timberwolves. Ah, uh, okay. 
I think it's time for him to go. I think it's time for him to go. He could be so good on so many teams. He could be very good on so many teams. I think we've talked about this before. You know, we do so many yeah. episodes. But I, I believe so we talked about this before. I think he said to the Suns or something like that. I think it's time for Cat to leave because the type of player that Cat is, Cat can put the ball on the floor. He can shoot. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. He doesn't work really well next to Rudy Check. Gobert because – so it's like he, he needs to go. Because yeah. any team in the NBA now that is trying to build to stop Giannis could use a player like Cat. Because the taller yes. the the taller the taller guys who can ha- who have guard skill are thriving right now in the NBA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if the Timberwolves don't see it, Stupid another asses. team will. Yeah. And they will pick up Cat. I I don't know when his, when his contract is in. I don't really deal with money. I don't deal with politics. I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. I'm saying from a basketball perspective, from a person who watches and, and analyzes basketball to the best of his ability, Cat yeah. needs to go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's, you know, because it's it's crazy, Chris, but it makes a lot of sense because like the answer used to be to power forwards and centers. You put a six, seven guy on them and you get up in them and you make them handle right like those guys were playing in the post. So they couldn't yeah. have that handle. So but now we're changing. Even Lauren Markin has got a handle like, mm-hmm. you know, these these teams now the power player is really starting to come back and it's really changing everything that we th- thought we knew and it's also like kind of funny because it's like the league go through goes through cycles sometimes yeah and i think we're getting the cycle back of like the 1990s ish where you have david robinson akeem patrick ewing alonzo morning freaking yeah michael jordan flying through the air and you have to stop him and charles barkley's huge and Carmelone. most of the best players in that era were taller guys right mm-hmm. guys can attack the rim and it's kind of we're seeing the value of that being pushed more as like an answer to these thinner guys and it's kind of fun to watch it's it's fun yeah. to watch it it change like this yeah yeah it's, it's just the evolution of basketball it's, it goes mm-hmm. back to one of our first series the evolution it's just we've seen it evolve mm-hmm. and we've seen the players evolve and now we're going through our we're actually witnessing an evolution of basketball yes. right now it, yes. It's changing. It is definitely changing. Um, <clears throat> yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It, agree. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's really just changing. And it's like, it's, it's mm-hmm. really fun to watch. It's really fun to watch. But I would say is that one thing that, like, outside of, like, you know, our, you know, the Giannis thing, right? Is that a lot more guards, right? Are starting to. The guards are starting to get a lot taller. Like, look at the Ben Simmons, uh-huh. the Pelo Bencaros. You know, the guards are getting taller now. So it's like everybody's getting taller in the NBA. It feels like if you're not, like, I fit, and I, I kind of understand now, right? Not to go too far back, but I understand how Isaiah Thomas, even though he was a great, he was a good player, I understand how he got pushed out the league. I, I yeah. can see that now. Oh, yeah. I can see that now. Cause, like, the guards are just too tall now. Yeah. Way too tall. Too I tall agree. and. The, and they they can back you down if you can't defend. Then it's just like because think about this for a second. LeBron plays point guard sometimes. You can't, yeah. you can't put five nine on six nine. <laughs> it's just like yeah. you can't put five nine on six nine. You can't yeah. do that. It's a whole. It's difference. almost like six two is kind of the cutoff line right now in the NBA. Yeah, six yeah. two. Yeah, six two. I mean, I mean, even I made a mistake with scouting whenever I was doing draft stuff for Davion Mitchell. I was mm-hmm. like, Davion Mitchell's a shot creator from the three. He can guard the defense so well. And I, for some reason, fucking forgot he's six foot. I'm <laughs> just like, now I'm just like, he's so fucking small. <laughs> yeah. He's not athletic. I'm like, oh, Jason. Yeah, you fucked that one up. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. Like, it's, it's tough. <laughs> what is, I think, women, women, Yana is like seven, four, right? Seven, three. Yeah. Seven, seven three. three seven, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you don't think they're just gonna get taller? <laughs> they're just gonna get taller and taller and taller. It, it's like it's unstoppable. It's unstoppable yeah. because they're too tall. How are you gonna defend that when the ball is seven feet above your head? It's like it's Nobody a whole is. foot above your head. You can't do that. You have to, you know. And I also think that we're witnessing teams understand how to use these kind of guys better, mm. right? That's I, a big I one. think. I think because it used to be so fundamental. Okay, a seven footer. I need him to shot block at the rim. It's like no, 
let him have some freedom, you know, put yeah. him in their strengths. And I feel like teams are starting to do that a little better. Even like Bull Bull and Orlando now, like they just they kind of use him better than give him space and they let him operate and they don't like always force him to be a screen setter all the time. And like, yeah, just get him more creative. And I think it's, I think it's definitely leading to a lot of good things. I, I, I agree with that, but I have a question for you, Jason, real quick. Uh huh. With the Chet Holmgren situation has has never has not played NBA minutes yet. Yes. What are you expecting to see next year? I'm worried about his handle. <laughs> I'm really? worried about his handle because he's not a power player. He's his handle was good in highlights, but when people got up into him, I was worried about it. So yeah. I'm, wor- I'm going to be worried about his ability to shot create for himself until he grows some size. Because he's tall, yeah. but, you know, and it's going to depend on how they use him. But I think in Oklahoma City, that makes a lot of sense for what he does, right? Because yeah. they need the shooting. They need his ability to be a good screen setter. And Oklahoma City Thunder, to all you people out there, that team is doing rebuilding right, okay? Yeah. Josh Giddy, oh my gosh. Josh Giddy <laughs> is a basketball purist's favorite player, okay? Yeah. I feel like Josh Giddy really emulates... People really have to understand Tyrese Halliburton. Something mm. pissed me off about Tyrese Halliburton. He's getting all-star votes. He's not a fucking all-star, okay? Oh, and God. the reason why <laughs> is because God. of these fucking assist numbers. Okay, these assist ah. numbers, he's he's leading the league in assists, or he's like top two, and he has like 10 points something. Oh my gosh, Tyrese Halliburton's a great passer and scoring 20 points per game. No, Tyrese Halliburton's not a top 25 passer in the fucking league. Okay, let's get this straight. He's probably top 40, (laughs) top 30. But you have to understand, like, Josh Giddey's a beautiful passer of the basketball. Not every assist guy is a good passer, right? Because think about the Indiana Pacers. Buddy Heald can't pass to save his life. Benedict Matherin's a rookie who can't pass to save his life. Chris Duarte can't pass to save his life. Miles Turner can't pass to save his life. So who do you think's going to get the assist numbers? It's going to be Tyrese Halliburton. Like, Very gosh true. darn it. Like, people, just watch the game of basketball and be enthralled by a guy like Josh Giddy who doesn't score a ton of points, but he makes his team so much better. He makes the Thunder better. And, yes, Shea Gilgis Alexander is phenomenal at creating buckets and yes. being a good passer. And, you know, he gets downhill in his unique own way. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like they're really improving it as, as a team. That GM's a hell of a GM. He's been the guy since they hate drafted James Harden and Kevin Durant. Yeah. You know, that's... That, they are the template to rebuild correctly. And mm-hmm. um, he has a good eye for people who have high basketball IQ, which a lot of people have issue finding. So, yeah, yeah. I had to go on my rant there, but assist numbers don't mean anything. They mean nothing. No. Draymond Green doesn't always get the assist because it's like, okay, that guy in the corner's open. I'm on the right side of the floor. I'm going to swing at one person over and tell that person to make the pass to Steph who's open in the corner. Right? Yeah. Like, it's not always like that. So it's a, It's that beautiful system basketball like the San Antonio yes. Spurs of old used to have. Like, yeah. it's like that extra pass is like so crucial to that next yes. person who's just wide open because they're expecting mm-hmm. the first pass to be the, the person who makes it, who takes it, who takes and makes the shot. Yes. You know? It's always that extra pass. Yes, that always leads to the best, the best high percentage shot, even if it's a three, because the high percentage shots are within the paint. It's not yeah. a three point shot. <clears throat> Kevin Durant's averaging like five assists a game right now. Yeah, extra pass. Can't pass. <laughs> Can't yeah. pass. It's the extra pass. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's it's a numbers. Okay, he can't pass. Yes. Yeah. Right. He does. He doesn't see the floor like a point guard. So no, yeah. he can't pass. Yeah. The best. Um, yeah, speaking of basketball IQ, I think that's a good thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So, like you said, like you said, Josh Giddy has a high basketball IQ. What are some yes. players you think that have a very low basketball IQ? Low basketball IQ players. Ooh, good question, Chris. Yeah. I'll start us off. Karis LeVert. <laughs> really? Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, he has very low basketball IQ. Yeah. I could He's definitely so... see... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think he's coached up well on how to score and defend, mm-hmm. right? 
but other than that, his decision making is so terrible. Yeah. Again. Yes. <laughs> Very bad decision making. Um, I think it was. I think it was the the game from not last night, but the night before, uh-huh. right? Because it like I'm watching the game. And I'm just like, Karis Levert, like he, he he can score without a doubt. Like I yes. can't take that away from him, right? He defends well as well. But like yes. just when it comes to like what to do in situations, is like he gets lost. <laughs> he gets yes. very confused because he's like, okay, my whole job right now is to put ball in basket, <laughs> but then yep. he's like double team run to double team <laughs> like exactly runs right into the double teams and then tries to take his shots but he's not able to take the same shot so then he causes turnovers yes i just and he's like one of those players who like where i like i think it was like a couple years back i just said like paul george is like one of the most consistently inconsistent players that's curious mm-hmm. right now he's the new paul george of the league he's consistently yeah. inconsistent and he has a he i don't know how to say he has like a really really low iq but he has a pretty low basketball iq yeah, I would say out of the top scorers in the league, yeah, I got a controversial Kyrie Irving. Kyrie what? Irving's about as gifted as a scorer as you could ever see, and he really understands Easily. that. Easily, but he's very underwhelming passing wise. Very underwhelming, yeah. especially for the point guard position. Like, there's a reason why he needs a guy who can pass the basketball with him, paired with him, that leads to winning, okay? LeBron yeah. James, paired with him, leads to winning. When he was on the Boston Celtics and he didn't have anybody else that could make passes, they were like, we can't do anything. And then he gets, you know, hurt in the playoffs, and then they're like, okay, Terry Rozier is a better pass than Kyrie. Okay, boom. And now we make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay. Yeah. Right. They made it with Jason Tatum's like a second year player in the league. And yeah. Right. And then the next year they're feuding because Jason Tatum's like, I'm that guy. You don't lead the winning like you think you do. And Kyrie is like, I average 30 a game. Like, what the fuck <laughs> right. are you talking about? <laughs> right. But that's because he doesn't understand the game. Right. You know, uh-huh. another guy is Julius Randle. Julius Randle can score, mm, but yeah. he can't pass. He, okay, he he's about and Zach Levine. Zach Levine can score, can't pass. You know what I mean? I love Zach Levine. We love. I, we yeah. we both love Zach Levine. Yeah, yeah, but he can't pass. There's a difference. I would I would disagree with the Kyrie one though. I, I don't okay. think he has like Fun. a pretty low basketball IQ because like <clears throat> outside of passing, which I know like that's like a big part of IQ, but I think. Uh-huh. On the scoring level, he doesn't make the same mistakes that other guards would make in those situations. Like he's like a magician with the ball a little bit. Like he yeah. he's gonna he's gonna perfectly split that defense. He's not going to just run into it. He's going mm-hmm. to like per- he sees the floor like a point guard because he's been trained as a point guard, but he's also a, one of the a top ten scorer in the league. So like he yeah. sees like different avenues to get around and to be a magician with the basketball to get to where he needs to go. Yeah. A lot of guards don't have that, so I would say that. He's not a low basketball IQ guy. I would say he's a high basketball IQ guy because yeah. of the type of player that he is. We never expected passing out of Kyrie. He's a pure scorer, as pure a scorer as it gets. <clears throat> I can give you that. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> Ooh, you want to know something that I really want to talk about? And I know you're going to talk about it, too. All right. Fans at home, I hope you're ready to see Jason uh, be pissed off. So, Charlotte ready? fucking Hornets, man. The Charlotte <laughs> Hornets. That head coach over there came out and basically said, All right, we have guys on this team that everybody's like, I want to see them play. But you, I get to watch these guys every game. And the reason why you think that these guys are good is because you don't see them play. But I do. I get to see them at practice. And that's the whole point. They're practicing. I get to see them. And that's where they're growing and developing. And right, like, you would, you. I, there's a lot of players in the league that you don't see and you think they're better than they are. Okay, head coach, right? You can dance around the fucking <clears throat> point as much as you want to, but you're stupid because you're talking about Mark Williams, who was a 15th pick in the draft, James Booknight, who was the 11th, Kai Jones, who was the 19th, who neither well, none, none of those three guys play more than 13 fucking minutes a game. Okay? Mm-hmm. Right? The Charlotte Hornets have won less than 15 games this year. Right? This is the same team that benched LaMelo Ball for half the season when LaMelo Ball won Rookie of the Year and was averaging 20-something in the second half of the year because That's they true. wanted to, him to earn it, okay, and not <laughs> yeah. develop him. 
tier goodness when they still sucked. Mason Plumley is not making your team so much better that he is going to be something to develop. This is this is not this is the point. Okay, I have listened to a lot. I'm sure Chris has too. Everybody that you we both listen to a lot of basketball talk. A lot of former NBA players. You know what they say made them better? Playing in games made them better. It's easier. Learning it's from easy. that. How many times? I, I, I we can. <laughs> We probably heard this 25 times. Every normal NBA person knows this. This is not some team that's like, okay, every player in this team's a veteran. They're over the age of 30. We know who they are as NBA players. Okay, that makes sense. This is the fucking dream team where all their talent is developed. Okay, Mm -hmm. these guys are 19 and 20. They need to get minutes on the floor to develop. Mark yeah. Williams is a unpolished product. Okay, yeah. if you want to develop only polished products, then tell your fucking GM to draft only seniors and guys that aren't high upside guys. Kai Jones, Kai Jones averaged like five points per game in college, but I liked him coming out of college because he's six foot eleven, moves like freaking Dominique Wilkins and can dunk in the air like in ways that you've never seen. But he's just really raw. Okay, how is he going to develop? If you guys don't want to let these guys get on the floor unless they're developed, stop stop drafting raw players. James Booknight had a lot of flaws in his game. He was a shot creator that had tough shot-making ability. But he just needs to develop a little bit as a passer and decision maker and develop his three point shot. Okay, he's not going to get better at those things in the decision making if he's not playing in the freaking games. Like, geez, no wonder you guys have been sucking at basketball for the past 25 years. Like, I, I, I can't even, like, what's the point of even having a franchise? I'm so sorry. If you're a Charlotte Hornets fan, you should choose a different team. The only thing relevant in Charlotte is the baby. Okay, that's it. That's the <laughs> only thing that matters. Nothing Damn. else. <laughs> the, the city of Charlotte doesn't have anything else. Okay, and I'm sorry, Lamelo, don't take the money. Don't take <clears throat> the money. Leave. Leave. <laughs> not you tell Lamelo not to get paid. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Um, I, I can see exactly where you're coming from with that because Charlotte's one of those teams where I think we've all talked about this, and I'm like. <clears throat> This is a really exciting team. I love to see them play. And then, like, yes. you just you get into the you get into the front office and things like that, and the coaching. You're like, what's going on? You, you're missing it. You're missing it. Oh my god! Are you blind? Glasses, glasses. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> contact something. Eye exam. And just the fact of the matter is that is this is that I think that the G League is a good start. But we should not depend on the G League when you have drafted NBA players. I feel that NBA players should not go back down to the G League to develop. Mm -hmm. They should play on NBA level. They should play on the NBA level against NBA level teams, against NBA level stars. That's how you develop players. Houston's doing it right. Memphis did it right. Denver at some point did it right. Yes. Sacramento is doing it great. Yes. Indiana is doing it perfectly. It's, yeah. you, you, this is how you do it. You can't. Yes. Why are we sending our the people we have drafted from college who didn't go to the G League down yes. to the G League to develop them to bring them up to the top floor, which is the NBA? That doesn't work. Makes why no are we sense. doing this? There, there, if, if that was the case, if that was the case, and this is the reason it is the way that things should be, there would be no G League Ignite team because you would just play on the G League level forever. Yeah. The G League Ignite team is so that you can be noticed. You get on this team, you beat your noticed, and then you move up to the NBA. You get drafted from the G League Ignite team. Yes. Look at um what's the what's the guy? Ah, uh, shoot, Houston. What's his name? Jalen Green. Jalen Green. G League Ignite. Yeah. Um what's the one um who Golden State Warriors? Uh Jonathan Kaminga, he played there. Jonathan yeah, Kaminga. Right. G League Ignite. Memory. Think about these players need to be playing in the NBA. Yes. I mean, like, or like Jason says, don't draft raw talent that's not <laughs> ready to play because goes to where's winning squad. Yeah. Jonathan Kaminga, work in progress. He's not quite there yet. Why send him back down to the G League where he came from <laughs> to play yeah. basketball? 
when he Makes needs no to sense. be on NBA floor? How is he going to ever get to the level of NBA of the? How is he ever going to get to the NBA level if he doesn't play against NBA level talent? How right. is Jalen Green? Well, he's playing against NBA level talent. How is um, Kai Jones, Mark Williams, Jonathan Booknight ever going to get to NBA level if they don't play against NBA level talent? Because mm-hmm. you say, oh, there's garbage time though. When you do garbage time, you're playing against other low level garbage players. players. So it's, <laughs> exactly, that's why it's called garbage time. So you not, you ass. never get that experience. You so you have to be cooked by LeBron. <clears throat> you got to get yeah. cooked by Curry in order to get better. Like this is yes. how you get better. Yes. You have to. Yes. Some teams just totally don't get right. it. No. Some teams just don't get it, and I don't understand why. Like I don't. <clears throat> I don't either. Like not uh, Michael Jordan. Look, you came out of college and you were 22 and you averaged 27 points per game. And also, you were the most gifted six foot six athlete of all time, and you're Very one sure. of the greatest basketball players of all time. Not everybody is you, okay? Not <laughs> yeah. every, not not everybody is you. All right, this is this is not a lot of people. Okay, they averaged five points per game. They, even Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard sucked when he started playing yeah. basketball oh in the NBA. Oh my gosh, yeah. But year after year, he's getting minutes and he's growing and he's learning and he's playing against the NBA talent. Like it's just they the uh, I we have like a thousand to two. There's a thousand players that have grown this way that we're talking about, Chris and I, and there's two that didn't. The two that didn't yeah. is Fred Van Fleet and Pascal Siakam. Both of them did play in the G League together, and they both helped their development. There's two yeah. to our thousand. Okay, would you yeah. rather have a point zero zero one percent chance or a hundred percent chance? You tell me. Okay. Yeah. Like Jesus Christ, like it it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It's simple, but for some reason. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets are so stupid. Could you imagine being somebody that has a billion dollars and spending a mm-hmm. billion dollars on a basketball organization? And nobody understands this. Like who who am I paying? Who? Yeah. Who? What 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 what's what's going on here? Is everybody Stephen A. Smith that I'm employing? Like, uh-huh. Skip Bayless? <laughs> then I just collode Skip Bayless twenty two times. Uh-huh, right. uh-huh. That's a joke. That's a joke. I'm sure, actually, <laughs> Skip Bayless would do a better job. I'll be honest yeah, with I you. Skip so Bayless would do a better job. Be honest, yeah. Like, it's 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 crazy. <sighs> oh, man, it's, just, it's, it's crazy. And then, so, I, to go back a little bit, right? To go to State Warriors, there's one player who I'm very, like, what is going on here? Actually, Weisman. sorry. Let me rephrase that. What the hell is going on here? And James yes, Weisman. it is James Wiseman. He plays, like, 15 games, get hurt, and then he's, like, what what happens? Where did he go? And then they put him back down to the G League, and I'm like, what do you want him to do? It's like, yeah. I don't know if it's like, if he's busting in front of us, because yeah. I don't like using that word, because I feel like, pause, I don't like using that word, because I'm like, I would like to give these <laughs> players a chance, because they're not completely ready. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just now got that. I know, I I know, I know. I know. I know it, it was it was just the word that came out. I'm sorry, guys. I <laughs> We're both but like I don't know okay. if he's Got like it. I don't know if he's like <laughs> failing in front of us or what's happening because yeah. like I don't like I I felt he had high upside and I don't like to use the word like he's he's a bust or whatever because yeah. like players like Julius Randle just had to be in the right system and you know and Bull Bull had to be in the right system and other players had to be in the right system and it's just, I don't know I feel like Golden State doesn't work. I mean, like, as well as we, like, I think for some of the players that Golden State have drafted, I feel like they don't always work exactly for I, that system. I 100% agree with you. I feel like that's exactly their issue this year, is they're being too rigid with the system and forcing people that just don't perfectly fit the system yet onto the bench, right? And yeah. James Wiseman is a good example of this because we're doing one game. I know it's only one game, so why are we valuing it? It's only one game. There's one game where he dropped like 28 in a game mm-hmm. in the NBA, okay, where he looked like, I was like, holy shit, this guy has a handle. Holy shit, this guy has a mid-range shot. Holy shit, this yeah. guy's got post moves. Holy shit, he can shoot it from three. Like, he showed me more in one game than I've ever mm-hmm. seen him with like, the Warriors. And it's because of the offense is restricting, right? It's okay. Yeah. I'm be be like Kevin Looney. Be like Kevin Looney. Okay, I just set screen. I need you to be lob. 
I need you. Right. And Jonathan Kaminga is stuck in the same place where it's like, yeah. OK, Steve Kerr came out and said, I view Jonathan Kaminga just can't play the three right now. OK, well, you need his ability to get to the rim because ever, nobody else can do it. Yeah. Right. You are losing games. And the reason why is your bench sucks because you're forcing the system over the talent of the player and fitting the system around the talent of the player. And this is mm-hmm. why Greg Popovich is the greatest head coach of all time, because man switches talent based on the system, based on the talent of the player, not yeah. the forcing it on to them. And I feel like Steve Kerr is really having an issue with it right now because they have guys like something lamb CD. I don't know what his full name is, but he's a, <coughs> Anthony Lamb, is that what it is? Yeah, some guy that gets like 18 minutes a game. All he can do is shoot a three. And he's like, there's three. And he's like, he sucks at basketball. And then they got some guys randomly in there that's like, okay, this guy's going to make these passes. Like, these guys suck. Like, um, when they're coming off the bench, like, if it's Jordan Poole and Dante DiVincenzo, why is the whole system built around them running off ball screens when that's not their strength? Both of mm-hmm. them you know what should be happening. Jordan Poole should be spamming that fucking pick and roll when nobody else is on the floor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look, there's no point to it. There's no point. They're forcing these guys into the system when the system isn't so good because it used to be just be the relied on because this is what won us championships. Okay. Yeah. The reason why that system's not going to work this year is because the defense isn't what it used to be because guys are going downhill aging wise on the starting lineup. Guys like Draymond Green can't defend like he used to. Guys like Clay Thompson can't defend like he used to. Kevon Looney can't defend like he used to just because athletically they're not the same. So, because of that, the system and the formula for winning has changed for the Golden State Warriors. And the way they used to do it is not the way it's going to work now, right? Yeah. So they need to be more fluid with these bench guys. Mm-hmm. And okay, James Wiseman's good in the post. Okay, James Wiseman's good at facing somebody with the mid-range. And so they're shooting at them, putting the ball on the floor, and getting to the rim. It may not be what we usually run in our system, but this is what he's good at. Jonathan Kaminga is good at dribbling the basketball and going and attacking the rim. That may not be what works in our system, but that's what he's good at, right? Yeah. And it's really holding the Golden State Warriors from growing into the team they should be. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> it's sad to see. Even Dante DiVincenzo is not a perfect fit. Like Dante, Dante, you know. Dante DiVincenzo does not run well off ball screens. Like He's not Clay Thompson 2.0. Like he's a shot you know. creator for himself. Like he's a pick and roll guy. You know what I mean? Like it's just, you know, it's the Curry offense, but there's only one Steph. Even Jordan yeah. Poole isn't Steph, right? Like, yeah. It's just, I, I, I think that you are totally right about the Warriors mishandling this. And I think James Wiseman still has the talent. It's just the Warriors are restraining that talent because they think the system's going to keep on working and it's yeah. sad for me to see because i used to thought steve steve kerr was fucking unbelievable as a coach and had no flaws but I, we're seeing steve kerr has a flaw here and it's yeah. too rigid to the system he's not flexible enough at all and is <clears throat> and that's what's going to end up being like going forward you have to think like <clears throat> Every player is not an Iron Man like LeBron. He's getting mm-hmm. hurt now. He's getting old. Age is catching up, mm-hmm. right? So eventually, you're not going to. It's going to be a day that's going to come along, you know, in the near future, where you're going to be like, "Well, Curry's not playing on the basketball court anymore," and then you're stuck in the Curry system, but you don't mm-hmm. have another Curry to put in that system. So now mm-hmm. you have to. You have to have these young talent develop, or they just going. I mean, or they just let them. Just let them sign somewhere else. Let them develop, and then maybe come pick them back up on the other side. Who knows? But you you have to be able to be flexible and fluid with the system mm-hmm. so that you can build a team for the future. Yeah. I mean, like you guys won a championship last year. I get it, amazing, you know. We but that's not going to be the same thing every year. You're Mm-mm. not going to keep going back to back to back. The, the, the league is changing around you for one, so you need yes. those taller guys. And Curry's not going to be a, a warrior forever. He's not going to be have a fifty you... year old warrior. Yeah. Have you seen them play against the Bucks? Giannis Antetokounmpo makes them look like fucking the Smurfs out there. Every time I watch <laughs> them play against the Bucks, I'm like, "Oh, you better pray you don't face them in the NBA Finals because it's it might be a sweep." Okay, you are yeah. a terrible matchup. Terrible. Even Zion 
Zion <laughs> might give them issues. Right? Oh, for it's sure. like, uh, yeah, you don't have the size here. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what the fuck are we gonna do? Uh, shit. <laughs> you know, even Jaws gives them issues because he's so athletic and can get to the rim and finish. Like, mm-hmm. <coughs> it's just. It gives them issues because they don't have any size. They've built the team based on the small ball concept of yes. the death. I mean, of, not of the death lineup, but of the lineup before the death lineup. Once again, mm-hmm. Curry, Clay, Iguodala, Harrison Barnes, and Draymond Green. They built that yeah. whole entire team based off of that system because it worked. Yes. Worked. ED, not working, worked. It <laughs> yes. used to work. It doesn't work anymore. You built the whole entire system off of that, and now you try to place pieces to replace. You're like, okay, we don't have Harrison Barnes anymore. Put him here. Yeah. Okay, we're going to put this person here. Put this much in here. We're going to put Jordan Poole here when Curry's not in. We're going to do this with Clay. Okay, and now nothing makes sense anymore because yeah. that system worked, but these players don't fit that system. Mm-hmm. Every player that is drafted is not a system player. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And they also have an issue where it used to be Andre Iguodala coming off the bench. You could run that also off ball sings because he can make those passes. He may not be Draymond Green, right? But they don't even have a guy like that coming off the bench, right? So when they're running those off ball screens, they get a lot of turnovers because they have nobody to make those passes. They they yeah. don't have anybody who's a good passer coming off the bench. Nobody. No, it's a big fat zero. And, you know, there's ways that can, in the trade deadline, you maybe you, they either need to adjust to the players on the team and make them fit the system or trade Jordan Poole. I know it's crazy. The only way that they can get the package to get them a good passer coming off the bench that can also shoot a three and attack the basket and get the bigs that they, they need like three pieces. What they need mm-hmm. is they have an issue at the guard position. They used to have Gary Payton coming off the bench. They Now Dante DiVincenzo and Jordan Poole can't guard to save their lives. So they need one guard coming off the bench that can defend. That's what they need. Mm-hmm. They need a guy who can make these passes and the fit in the system and attack the basket and shoot a three. That's a rare guy. They need to find yeah. a guy like that, and they need a, a big if you don't believe in James Wiseman and you're not going to adjust for James Wiseman, they need a big that can shot block and set screens and has enough basketball intelligence to fit in the system, right? Those mm-hmm. are three players that are tough to find. The only way you're going to pull that shit off is your Trey Jordan pool, Trey Jordan yep. pool, and maybe Wiseman. And then you can get guys like maybe I made a trade like this. I was talking about it. So I'll, I'll just give you guys a little teaser. Franz Wagner, Mo Bamba, and Jalen Suggs would all bring all of those things. Franz Wagner mm. would be the passer they need, shoot a three. Yeah. Jalen Suggs is a great defender. Mo Bamba would shoot a three, shoots 37% for the three-point line, and be a shot blocker at the rim. Right? That's not bad. Yeah. So <clears throat> that, that that's they, they need to make a decision because if they don't make a decision, this is not going to be a championship. And it's, what makes me so upset is Clay Thompson's playing like – 2018 clay like he somehow yeah reverse time like i don't know how the fuck yeah. he did that but holy <laughs> shit <time> clay, machine. <laughs> clay thompson looks amazing he's averaging yeah. like 31 points in the last eight games or some ridiculousness like that like clay thompson looks like wow like you have the pieces to win a ring rich you're it's either you choose to adapt or you choose to, you know, blow some guys that could be good trade assets. They got to make a decision. I think that's a perfect <laughs> word, adapt, right? And it's one yeah. team that I would say that's another, as a California team, like the Golden State Warriors, that is actually doing things the right way is Sacramento. Mm. Sacramento is doing things perfectly when it comes to adapting a system, bringing in yes. a new coach who creates a system, fits the players to the system. They all buy in. And they just look phenomenal. I would have never thought in a million years Sacramento would look this good. Hey, Ever. as somebody that you used to love the Sacramento Kings, I'm glad for you. Because <clears throat> I exactly right. Because I'm yeah. like, finally, like I just did a little dance. <laughs> like it's like, because you know, Sacramento to me, <clears throat> and I can and like I stopped watching Sacramento for a long time. Me too. Like I remember I was like sitting there just minding my own business one day and just scrolling through the internet, scrolling through YouTube. And I came upon a video where it was talking about the, the I think it was the GM or the owner of the Sacramento Kings saying that we need to play like four people play defense and one person sits back. And it was during the Bookie Cousins era of Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to cherry pick. And I was like, 
I can't watch this team anymore because they don't know ba- – because clearly the front yeah. office does not know basketball, and that's what bothers yeah. me. It's just like I can't I can't sit here and, and, and enjoy this game knowing that mm-hmm. it's a – because it's, 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 a, it's a dumbass in, in the front office somewhere scheming <laughs> with this mm-hmm. type of with, – with, with this in mind, and that, that doesn't yeah. make sense to me. But I will say, I don't know what happened. You know, it took some years. I'm happy yeah. to say it. We got Mike Brown. They drafted really well. Brought in DeMontis Sabonis, and now they're looking phenomenal. I mean, like playoff level team now. And I'm yes. like, hmm, who would have thought? I don't know if they fired the guy, <laughs> if they told him to shut up. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but he's gone. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's not. Yeah. He's not influencing basketball culture anymore. Thank God. There in Sacramento because they're a winning team now. Yes. So. Praise to Sacramento. I know you got something to say, Jason. This is Basketball 101. Lean into your strengths, people. Okay? This is what they had. They had De'Aaron Fox, who's always been a good passer. DeMonte Sabonis affects the game so much more than a stat sheet because of his passing. And they brought in a guy who's going to run the Warrior system, who's based on passing. You know what they also did? They brought in the X Factor for this NBA season, which is Kevin Herter, to run all those mm, off-ball screens. Yeah. And you pair them with the Monte Sabonis, and that's a winning combination that's led to winning. And <clears throat> DeMontis Sabonis is a phenomenal passer. For all you stat guys out there, he's a better passer than Tyrese Halliburton. Okay? Yeah. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. keep on making this point. So is De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox is very underrated. People love to hate him. But he's really developed his three-point shot more. He's definitely not as turnover hungry. He's playing within himself. Every shot's a good shot. He's really developing basketball IQ. We're seeing the peak of De'Aaron Fox. He's an all-star level guard. He's just in the West, and there's like eight guards that can be in the all-star game in the West. It's ridiculous. And, you know, we're just witnessing a, a, a team that's playing to their strengths as a team, you know, and Mike Brown, coach of the year. Why not? I, I would say so. They're I the third seed so. in the West. So, I, yes, that's a turnaround. That's a, yeah. that's a big turnaround. That's, I could see yes. him winning that. Coach of the year. Coach He's of the a great year. Story. But even though that coach of the year really doesn't mean anything because coach of the years get fired. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so look at Dwayne Casey. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's so it makes me so happy, Chris, to see them yeah. play winning basketball. It really does. It really does. It it really warms my heart, you know, because yeah. I was like for a second, I was like, damn, like we ain't gonna never see another Sacramento team be good, and that was like, finally, <clears throat> yeah, yeah it makes me happy. Yeah, and I think that you know, there's got to be one more team that I think that we could improve, right? And okay. I think that the improvements. You know, and I know that there are some people out here who's like, you know, I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of you guys talking about this team all the time. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. But it's one of my favorite teams, so I have to say something. You know, whether anybody agrees or not, because hey, what you gonna do? Tell me to shut up. Too bad I'm gonna keep talking. Lakers, <laughs> mm-hmm. Lakers, Lakers are. It, I, I just have to voice it. They're doing a lot better. I mean, like. I don't know. The the they finally bought in. Some things started moving around. They started moving some pieces, and Thomas Bryant and LeBron and Russ start playing really well together. And then AD is gonna come back soon. Me personally, I see good things coming out of the Lakers team. One like it it like uh, this year at least. This year, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like with the trade deadline, they're gonna move some pieces. If Russ is gonna end up gone again, if he's building his is building his stock for no reason, but they're playing well. They're playing well, in my opinion. I I, I want to see what happens when AD gets back and they start putting AD and Bryant next to each other. Maybe make Bryant play center and AD play power forward the way he wants to play. Mm-hmm. Throw LeBron in the mix and you know whoever else you want to put in there. And it's, I think I think that, I'm not gonna say. I think they're gonna be in the playoffs. I don't think they're gonna win a championship, but they're gonna they're gonna look a lot better than what they did in the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think that uh, they will look better than they did at the beginning of season two. Um... I do think that it'll be first round and bust at best uh, because they just don't have the depth that on the lineup. I do agree yeah. with you that they're kind of locked in to keeping LeBron and AD this year. I think for some contractual reason, I think LeBron James is not eligible, eligible to be traded. That's what I read. So, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of have to literally they have to keep him this year. So um, <clears throat> I agree. I think we're seeing a um, 
on LeBron James that is just like, wow. I mean, the guy is yeah. so old. The guy is still dominating the game of basketball. We've never seen anything like this. Um, and he's so special. And, you know, I definitely agree that we should be, you know, appreciating him while he's here. And um, in like nine-ish games, he's supposed to break the Kareem record, right? Nine or eight. So It's, it's crazy. Right before the mm-hmm. All-Star game, they're going to use the All-Star game to honor him. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. As they, they should. They should the scoring title after him. Yeah. That'd be actually really cool. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. Oh, yeah. MJ's the better player than the guy who's the, literally the scoring title? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it, right. it's fun it's fun <clears throat> oh my goodness and oh my from one, goodness. one la team to the next the clippers though right Kawhi's playing a lot better yeah to all you basketball fans out there turn on your tv Kawhi's looking explosive uh-huh uh the west if Kawhi keeps playing like this they're the best team in the West because they're the most complete team because the Grizzlies don't believe. I saw some stats. Oh, the, the BDPO something 2532 has the Memphis Grizzlies the best defense in the league. Uh, yeah. Is that a Go Star Wars watch- robot? <laughs> <laughs> no. Go watch Desmond Bain have the hips of a fucking wooden board. Yeah, go tell me how good he defends and how John Morant literally looks like he's asleep on defense. Yeah, they have two <laughs> guards that can't defend, and there's some first and some random ass statistic. I don't care. Okay, they're right. not as good as you think defensively. They're not as complete a team as you think defensively. It's the same thing with the Denver fucking Nuggets. They have above average defenders. Ca- Caldwell Watch Pope is, <laughs> is overrated <laughs> defensively. Aaron Gordon's overrated defensively. These guys aren't, you know, Draymond Green. They're above average. You just see them guarding Steph because Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. can't guard and wouldn't port either. Okay. Nor can Nashawn Bones Highland. Hey, but Jamal Murray's looking a lot more athletic too, but yeah, this team's complete. Yeah, watch him out. <laughs> yeah, this team's complete. Kawhi Leonard's looking really athletic. He's definitely, you know, I don't think he's going to be better than Jason Tatum or Kevin Durant, but with the team that they have over there, they're still sacked. They still have so many shooters, so many defenders. They're so switchable. They're so they're just so great over there talent wise. And complete teams are winning NBA championships. That's and they're true. they're depending in the playoffs. So I feel like they can really do it. And also, yeah, Jamal Murray is looking more athletic too. Like he's definitely looking more like what we used to see from him. And I feel like the Jokic and Murray combo is just Going to be even better before because Jokic is better than it was before because Jokic is fucking ridiculous. If you have not enjoyed some Jokic, go enjoy some Jokic because the man's amazing at the game of basketball, okay? Yeah. He's he's beautiful. As somebody that's a guy that loves the beauty of basketball and really loves basketball like you, it's just so much fun to watch Jokic because he just tears people up passing wise, and he always makes the right decision, and he always takes the right shot, and he always makes his teammates so much better. And he tries on defense, even though he can't really play defense, but he tries. Yeah. You know what I mean? He cares about winning, and it's just you love basketball. Jokic is just so much fun to watch. True. Speaking of the Nuggets and basketball, I think we have time. To trade Michael Porter Jr. or release I him, I, th- I think it's I think it's <clears> time. <throat> and like I said, I don't want to be like, oh, he's a bust, but like maybe he just doesn't fit. Is it, that's yeah. very possible? He just doesn't fit, and you know, just move on, move on from him. Bring somebody else in who fits. Whatever you're trying to accomplish there, you know, far system wise, and I think it works. But I don't, I don't think he should be a nugget anymore. I honestly don't. I uh, don't think he should be a nugget. A guy, I think they should attack. <clears throat> Like mm-hmm. lions in the den is Ochi Ananubi, six foot seven, three. Everybody wants him though. Defend the lights out of the basketball. Anyway, I would said picks. I look, look, a guy like that would be phenomenal, right? Like that's yeah. the kind of guy that they go get. Um, they really need as many elite defenders as they can, so they can be a more complete team. 
and they got a guy on their bench too that's like number fifty, Isaiah Rab or Isaiah Rob or you know he moves really well. He plays really great de- defense. I think he's the best defender on their team. He just doesn't get a ton of minutes. Um, I think he would be a good def- power forward starter if they wanted to trade Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. to get like a great three. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, I I think there's ways for them to become an NBA championship team because I love I want to see Jokic win a ring. I, mean, I love Jokic. So. Um, you know, it's 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 fun. The West is the West has teams that look good on paper in like in the win column. But yeah, the top four teams in the league are in the East. OK, it, it's, yes. it might be the top five the way the Philadelphia 76ers are looking and Joel Embiid's looking like the f- freaking Hulk. <laughs> yeah, the Sixers are definitely a good <clears throat> team. I yeah. would say. I will say, though, um. In the West, um, it could the Clippers have a chance to come out the West? Um, True. And going back to the Nuggets, I think that the best basketball the Nuggets played was bubble bubble Nuggets when yes. they had um, Jeremy Grant, Paul Millsap. I think yeah. if they could somehow recreate that a little bit, yeah, because it worked. Yeah, they did. can re- recreate that again and try to and like maybe like move off from. Um, Michael Porter Jr. I mean, I'm okay with Aaron Gordon staying a little bit longer. Yeah, me too. And possibly <clears throat> getting something like something like that, they could win again. Did you hear though? What? Aaron Gordon says, "I will participate in the dunk contest Whoa. and I'm an All Star." Well, he's not participating because he fucking sucks at the <laughs> basketball. <laughs> and there we go. How are you going? To, you, you can't. Yeah. You can't be like, okay, listen. Please I'll try dunk to be an All Star for you. <laughs> That's all you do for your team. That's all he does for the Nuggets. He does a post. He okay, yeah, he, Jason. He posts. Okay, yeah, he scores two points a game posting. Ooh, yeah, so scary. <laughs> when when when? Okay, if you face him in the playoffs and I face him in the playoffs, this is my scouting report. Nothing. Nothing. There's <laughs> nothing there. We don't have to stop him at all. He doesn't scare me at all. What is he gonna do? Nothing. He's not an elite three-point shooter. He's not an elite scorer. He can't take anybody off the dribble. No, he doesn't post enough to be valuable in the post because you have Nikola fucking Jokic on the team who posts. You know what I mean? All he does is catch lobs. Ooh, it might be a great highlight, but he's going to score four points a game doing it. Yeah. I don't don't have to guard him. He he does nothing. He he does nothing. Okay, (laughs) if you want to get the all-star game, how about you not do nothing more? Okay, how about that? <laughs> I mean, you asked that answer right. that question. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'll hold this over the NBA head. They want me. They want an exciting dunk contest, right? <clears throat> so I will be in the dunk contest if you just wave your magic NBA wand and make me an All Star. <laughs> <coughs> not a fucking chance in hell. <laughs> I will dunk. He's not the even ball better more. than Lamar Odom. Oh God, hello. <laughs> yeah, Lamar Odom was a sixth man. He was a, coming off the bench. You're not even yeah. better than an elite bench player. Yeah, he, he's not. <laughs> he's not. But he's like, I will dunk the ball more, NBA. Listen. Oh, listen God. to me, Adam Silver. I will dunk the ball more if you wave your magic NBA wand and make me an all-star. But who will he kick out? Because <laughs> everybody's better than him. Yeah. He's gonna be a reserve. If you want to be an All Star reserve? I can, I'll make him All Star reserve just so he can dunk yeah. basketball. I want to see some crazy stuff at the dunk contest. Fucking Nuggets. Man. That that'll that'll make me happy. <laughs> the only good three things about the Nuggets is Bones, Highland, Jamal Marley, and Jokic. Everything else just makes me want to choke somebody out because it's like, how can you be so stupid to build a they team? Traded like away this? the entire team. There's no more Terry <laughs> Craig. There's no more. What was the guy's name? Will Barton. Oh my God. Will Barton. There's no more. Will, Will Barton used to drop on. like 20 a game sometimes. Like, <laughs> where, why? It was a perfect they fit with all of them away. What was the point? All of them away. It dropped a fucking it, they, KCP. Mills. Fucking KCP literally. Okay, listen. For me to, to, to trade for KCP or to even sign KCP, I would literally go back, watch his highlights from the Lakers. And I have mentioned this many a time when he was on the Lakers. I was like, there was one game where he scored zero points and averaged and got fouled out the game. He was running around and fouling. That's enough for me not to, tra- not to sign or trade for him. That's enough. I don't have to do anything else. I would look at that game and go, no. 
the people, the peep, the the players that get labeled as good defenders make me want to stab people in the eyes with fucking knives. I don't know how these fucking guys. Cartavius Caldwell Pope is not a good defender. He's an average defender. You just see him guarding Steph Curry because most of the times when he's been on teams, they've had other guards on the teams that had to score because he can't fucking score. And his role was to guard. Just because somebody's role is to guard doesn't mean they can guard. KCP. Running around and fouling. I was like, at that point, me and, if I'm a Denver Nugget <sighs> office, I'm not going to be like, I would like, be like, there's no way I'm signing this man. It's like, no way. <laughs> no, not a I would look at just that game. I would look at that game. I don't have to look at any other game. I wouldn't look at any rings. Nothing. N- nope. I-, I don't care if you drop a 10. I would look at that game and say no. <laughs> and say absolutely no. Uh, Chris. <laughs> Just no. It just makes me so sad. <laughs> it just makes me so sad. <sighs> it, it makes me sad too, because like, why? Where did where did we get this from? <clears throat> but all right, guys, we have reached the end of another great and exciting episode in yep. the world of the Basketball Addicts Podcast. Uh, yes. You know, thank you all for listening so so very much. You know, we definitely appreciate all of the comments and mm-hmm. the TikTok reviews and the likes and the subscribes and you're helping us grow when you're growing with us. You're coming along on this journey with us guys. You're part of us because yes. you make us who we are. So we're just going to keep bringing you guys, you know, great content, unique mm-hmm. takes, more episodes like this where, you know, where it's just fun. It's yeah. fun, more fun. Um and, you know, just, we want to invite you along on the ride with us. And, you know, once again, like I said before, we have a website now, hey. you know. Me and sure. Jason have worked hard on this, and he has created a website. And, yeah. you know, go ahead, check that out. It's in the link in our bio in our um, Instagram. It'll be in the link in our bio in our TikTok very soon. We have merch on there as well. Go check some yeah. stuff out. You know, tell us how you like it. Give some comments, you know. So, hey, you can even email us, you know, something like that. If you want to talk, I mean, you should maybe we might, you know, let, let a couple of guys come on and talk to us for a little bit. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll start up a Discord. Who knows what's in the future for the basketball addicts. But yeah. once again, just thank you for coming along on this ride with us. Like I said, once again, we just appreciate you guys so much. And um, I'm Chris Common. I'm Jason Collins. And we are the Basketball Addicts. Peace.